A very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television this Saturday morning. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and here are the headlines. GST Council cuts rates on mass use items from 28% to 18%. Tax rate effectively cut on as many as 178 goods. Prime Minister says changes will further benefit people. Cabinet approval for National Testing Agency to conduct entrance examinations, not to setting up of commission to recommend hiking salaries of judges in lower courts. Vice President says development of farmers of paramount importance at 9th AgroVision exhibition in Nagpur calls for better infrastructure facilities to the community. Centre asks northern states to help farmers hire machines to crop manage crop residue. This as the National Green Tribunal seeks reply from the Delhi government on need for implementing odd-even formula to tackle alarming pollution. And Pakistan says it will allow Kulbushan Jadav to meet his wife on humanitarian grounds. India had requested visa for Jadav's mother. Jadav sentenced to death in Pakistan on charges of espionage. Our top story this morning, the GST Council on Friday reduced the tax rate on a wide range of mass-use items. Now, at its 23rd meeting in Guwahati, the all-powerful council reviewed the list of items attracting the top 28% tax to just 50% from the 228 items previously. In effect, the rates were cut on 178 goods, following which items like chewing gum, chocolates, facial makeup, shaving and aftershave items, as well as shampoo, deodorants, uh, washing powder, detergent, granite and marble will attract only 18% tax rate. Now, luxury goods like uh, washing machines, air conditioner, paints and cement have, however, been retained at 28%. The GST Council decision is expected to have a revenue implication of 20,000 crore rupees annually. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that as a part of the efforts to rationalize the GST structure, the Council has been reviewing rates from time to time. During the meeting, the Council also looked at the most comprehensive overhaul of rates, easing filing of returns and providing more relief to small and medium enterprises. Return filing procedure hai. <coughs> initial months ke liye, yani is saal ke liye, till 31st March. 31st March is liye ki uske baad hawari committee jab ke jo decisions hai, usko implement karne ka schedule को बताएंगे कि इनिशियल स्टेजेस में ट्रेड के ऊपर बर्डन कम रहे उस कंप्लायंस बर्डन को और ईज किया गया है सो वी हैव ईज इन द कंप्लायंस बर्डन इवन मोर टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च फिटमेंट कमेटी ने बासठ वस्तुओं को 18 परसेंट की श्रेणी में रखने की अनुशंसा की थी लेकिन आज एक आम सहमति बनी और जिसमें और 12 वस्तुओं को 18 परसेंट की श्रेणी में रखा गया है यानी अब केवल 50 वस्तुएं बच गई हैं खास करके जो लग्जरी गुड्स हैं जैसे एयर कंडीशनर फ्रिज हैं वॉशिंग मशीन हैं या फिर वैसी चीजें जिन पर पहले भी तीस से ज्यादा टैक्स लगता था तो वैसी चीजों को छोड़कर बाकी अधिकांश चीजें जो हैं वो 18 परसेंट की श्रेणी में आ गई हैं। टैक्स रेट तो एक जुलाई से पहले कम रखने चाहिए थे और मैं हर मीटिंग में बोलता रहा हूँ कि 28 परसेंट का टैक्स रेट का मतलब है कि आप ब्लैक मार्केटिंग को बढ़ावा देना चाहते हो जितना जल्दी कम कर दें उतना अच्छा है द प्रूलिंग हैज बिन डन फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी एट टू एटीन इन ओवर टू हंड्रेड आइटम्स सिमिलरली a large number of items has also been pruned from 18% to lower. 
Meanwhile, West Bengal Finance Minister Amit Mitra said that the centre's decision to implement the GST hurriedly has led to losses of approximately 1 lakh crore revenue in the first three months since the rollout of the GST. Let's take a listen. The tax losses in the last three months have been phenomenal. For all states or for many states? For many states, aggregate loss is 60,000 crores by the central government. The central government? Yes. And 30,000 crores hmm. of the states because the system, we had said repeatedly, don't launch it on 1st of July. But Zabardasti launch kara gaya. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the GST Council recommendations will further benefit the people and add a strength to the tax regime. The Prime Minister on Twitter said that the GST rate cuts were taken, keeping in mind the people of the country. The Prime Minister stressed that the government was working tirelessly for the country's economic integration. The PM also said that public participation was at the core of the government's functioning and that all its decisions were people-friendly and people-centric. However, the Congress party has accused the government of distorting the noble idea of GST by hastily implementing it. In a series of uh, tweets, uh, former Finance Minister P. Jidambaram said that the government had agreed to the reductions with an eye on Gujarat elections, taking credit for the rate cut. Chidambaram also said that the Congress will continue to push for revenue neutral rate in GST. Also, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi asked the government to correct the fundamental flaw in GST architecture to give India a genuine simple tax. Kabbar Singh tax ka jo vikrit roop dikha hai aapko, uske baare mein wo jo kahawat hai wo kar rahi hai sarkar. Ek achhi cheez ko vikrit kaise karna? Na ispe one nation ka tatwa hai, one tax ka hai. Saat tax to abhi gin diya humne. अब आठवां और नवा आने की बाकी बा, बा, बाकी बचा है नंबर टू वन नेशन वन टैक्स कहां से हुआ अगर 40 से 45 प्रतिशत भारत देश इस टैक्स के बाहर है and several export promotion bodies have prized uh, Parliament's uh, Standing Committee on Commerce so the impact of a GST in several sectors now the delegations also made uh, point wise presentations to the parliamentary panel Exports have also asked for more tariff support under the merchandise export from India scheme. To address the decline in exports, the exporters have requested for competitive exchange rate and a rupee appreciation be stabilized. And the second meeting of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister was held yesterday. The meeting, chaired by Niti Aayog member and Council Chairman Bibek Dev Roy, spelled out a clear roadmap for stepping up a skill development, job creation and enhanced resource investment in the social sector. The Council deliberated upon improvements needed in the national accounts and innovative steps to unlock growth, exports as well as the employment potential of a growth drivers, including transformation of India's gold market. The meeting also called for efforts to boost infrastructure financing and formulate far-reaching recommendations for the 15th Finance Commission. The Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council was uh, meeting for the second time since October 11th. In the first meeting, the Council had identified focus areas like economic growth, employment, informal sector, economic governance, agriculture, consumption and social sector. Now let's take a look at the IIP figures. After growing at 4.3% in the month of August, the industrial production growth dipped to 3.8% in the month of September. For the April to September 2017 period, the factory output growth stood at 2.5%. The highest growth was registered in the coal sector, registering 10.6% growth year-on-year, year, followed by the petroleum refinery at 8%, natural gas at a 6.3% and electricity at 5.2%. The fertilizer sector posted a decline of 7.1% year-on-year. The steel sector, which showed a slowdown in the month of August, posted a rebound and it grew at 3.3%.
On to some other news now, the Union Cabinet has given its approval for setting up a commission to recommend hike in salaries of judges in lower courts. The decision will impact 21,000 judges of the lower courts. The National Judicial Pay Commission for Subordinate Judiciary will make recommendations to the states, preferably within 18 months. The commission aims at making pay scales and the conditions of service of judicial officers uniform throughout the country. The approval was also given for the creation of a national testing agency. The NTA, chaired by an eminent educationist, will initially conduct entrance examinations, which are currently being conducted by the CBSC. Other examinations will be taken up gradually after the NTA is fully geared up. The restructuring of the National Rural Drinking Water Program was also given approval. The aim of the restructuring is to make it competitive and outcome-based. The cabinet also approved uh, over 25,000 crore rupees for developing an exhibition come convention center in Delhi in the League of Shanghai, Hong Kong and Singapore in the area of exhibition market. Now, apart from this, uh, the government also decided to use a part of its buffer stock of 18 lakh tons of pulses to meet a protein requirement under various central schemes, including midday meal. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said that development of farmers is of paramount importance. The Vice President said this while inaugurating the 9th AgroVision exhibition in Nagpur on Friday. Now, addressing the Agricultural Summit, the Vice President said that more farmers should be provided with better infrastructure facilities, roads and power. He underscored the need for a broader debate on agriculture and the challenges faced by farmers across the country. He also said that the government is taking right steps towards farmers' welfare and also praised schemes like the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana and Kisan Credit Cards. The Vice President also inaugurated water management and irrigation projects for Vidharva farmers. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari was also present at the occasion and he announced a World Bank-supported 6,000 crore rupees scheme to improve the irrigation facilities and water accessibility capacity in several states, including Maharashtra, Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, and Gujarat. रोग से जुड़े हुए, जनता से जुड़े हुए हैं। उन समस्याओं का जब रचनात्मक चर्चा होता है, उसके बारे में ज्यादा फोकस नहीं दे रहे। मैं चाहता हूँ इस विषय के बारे में, में ग्रामीण विषय के बारे में और खेती संबंधित विषय वर्ग में, मजदूरों के विषयों के बारे में भी मीडिया फोकस करना चाहिए सही पिक्चर लोगों को बताना चाहिए सदन में क्या होना चाहिए लोगों को मालूम होना चाहिए खेती में अलग-अलग प्रकार के प्रयोग हो इन सभी प्रयोगों को एग्रोविजन के माध्यम से आम किसानों तक पहुंचाया जाता है और लाखों किसान यहां पर केवल हाजरी ही नहीं देते तो यहां के वर्कशॉप में सम्मिलित होकर नई नई प्रैक्टिसेस को अपने खेती में ले जाने का प्रयास भी करते हैं हमारी सबसे बड़ी समस्या अगर महाराष्ट्र के और विदर्भ के अगर कोई है तो पानी की समस्या है अगर पानी की समस्या को अगर हम सुलझाएंगे तो मुझे नहीं लगता कि विदर्भ में कोई किसान आत्महत्या करेगा और ये हमारे लिए अभिमान का विषय है कि हमारे महाराष्ट्र में देवेंद्र जी के नेतृत्व में जो सरकार आई है उन्होंने किसानों की समस्याओं के लिए उन्होंने सबसे बड़ा प्राधान्य दिया है। And in the evening, uh, Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu reached a Bhopal. Today, he will attend the 13th annual convocation of the KII University. And the centre has issued an advisory to state governments to create awareness among farmers about harmful effects of straw burning. The centre said that a burning of a crop residue in states like Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan contributes in increasing environmental pollution levels. The centre has asked the states to facilitate farmers' residue management machines and equipment. The states have also been directed to utilise funds available under the Submission on Agricultural Mechanisation for de Demonstration of uh, Straw management. Machines at uh, farmers' fields. The centre has allocated funds of 132.5 crore rupees to four states in 2017-18 to demonstrate these machines. 
Meanwhile, in related news, the National Green Tribunal has questioned the Delhi government's decision to roll out the odd-even car rationing scheme for five days starting from Monday. It directed the city government not to implement the scheme unless it can be established that it was not counterproductive. The NGT is hearing the case today as well. Reprimanding the Delhi government for waking up so late to curb air pollution, the National Green Tribunal said that the odd-even scheme cannot be implemented randomly. It said the Ahmadmi Party government is resorting to the odd-even scheme despite it being called ineffective. It also questioned the state government as to why it was exempting two-wheelers and women drivers. The NGT also told the Delhi government to give an undertaking that it will roll out odd-even only when particulate matter levels are over 300. In a related development, the NGT also pulled up the Punjab government for the lack of measures to tackle crop burning. The biggest question is that we have today. We have to listen to the energy in Delhi. We will have to listen to the energy in 24 hours, so we will have to stop the generator. कंस्ट्रक्शन साइटों पर हम कहें उनको कवर कर कर या कहें गार्बेज जलाना अभी पिछले दिनों आपने देखा गार्बेज जलने से कितना जबरदस्त पोल्यूशन हुआ था हमें उस व्यवस्था को ठीक करना पड़ेगा जनरेटर बंद करने होंगे नीटकों के भट्टों को बंद करना होगा हमें ड्राई मॉपिंग की बजाय हमें मैकेनाइज मॉपिंग करनी पड़ेगी कितने वाहन खरीदे गए दिल्ली के लिए मैकेनाइज मॉपिंग खेलने के लिए ये सवाल जो हम कर सकते हैं वो करना चाहिए बजाय इसके कि हम कोई ऐसे लोक लुभावन सुझाव दे दें जिनका कोई समाधान ही ना हो। All the various causes of this problem, one of them is of course vehicular pollution, the other is the pollution from stubble burning in the neighbouring states or from areas around Delhi. Now instead of tackling those issues seriously through the year. What we find is that nothing is done through the year by the government and just when the crisis hits us, then this kind of uh, tokenism or this showy solutions like odd even are trotted out. A bench headed by NGT Chairperson Justice Swatantra Kumar directed the Delhi government to submit the details of the ambient air quality during the earlier implementation of the odd even scheme. The government is expected to present evidence in court on Saturday without the support of the centre. Delhi air is unfit for human habitation. It's causing uh, unmeasurable, uh, it's causing immense amount of damage to lung health, to our heart, to our brain and to every part of the body. It's going to shorten the life of each and every person who's breathing this toxic air. Earlier, the Delhi government had also announced free travel for commuters in all DTC cluster buses during the odd-even scheme. The national capital is experiencing severe air quality as pollution levels breach permissible standards by multiple times. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. Meanwhile, the Meta department has predicted that in the coming days, the national capital will get relief from the smog. Our reporter, Navikram Singh, spoke with the Director General of Meteorological Department, Dr. K.J. Ramesh. Here are the details. हमारे साथ हैं मौसम विभाग के महानिदेशक डॉक्टर के जे रमेश मौसम का क्या रुख है कुछ लोगों का कहना है कि मौसम में नमी है इस वजह से स्मॉक दिल्ली में जमा हुआ है क्या आपको क्या लगता है ये अभी जो है ये एमिशंस जो लोकल एमिशंस है पोल्यूटेंट्स है उसी से जो हाईर कंसंट्रेशन हुआ है एंड मौसम का प्रभाव इतना ही है जो एमिशंस आ रहे हैं उसको दूसरी तरफ ले जाने का डिस्पर्स करने का कंडीशंस नहीं है आने वाले दिनों में कब तक राहत मिलने की उम्मीद है आज से या कल से पर्टिकुलरली हल्का सा स्ट्रॉगर विंड्स बनना शुरू हुआ है जो जैसा स्ट्रॉगर विंड्स स्ट्रेंथ बढ़ती है चौदह से पहले सो राहत मिलना शुरू हो जाएगा इसके लिए इन स्थितियों से निपटने के लिए क्या किया जा सकता है पोल्यूटेंट्स की वजह से लोकली कुछ फॉग भी है कुछ हेज भी है सब मिल के वी आर कॉलिंग इट एज स्मॉग उसमें जो बर्नट मटेरियल पंजाब से जो ट्रांसपोर्ट होकर आ रहा है सब मिल के इट इज़ बिकमिंग ए स्मॉग बिकॉज बिकॉज ऑफ आवर ओन एक्शंस रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द इंक्रीज कंसंट्रेशंस ऑफ एमिशंस जो यूज ऑफ डीजल लॉन्ग टर्म में कम करनी पड़ेगी हमारे ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम में रेन्यूबल एनर्जी बेस्ड 
हाइब्रिड टेक्नोलॉजी वाला जैसे आ रहा है उसको ज़्यादा अपनाना है पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट में एंड अदर थिंग्स में सो ये सब देन लोकल सोर्सेस ऑफ पोल्यूशन कम करना है डीजल कंजम्पन ही एलिमिनेट करने की डायरेक्शन में जाना है तो आप देख सकते हैं मौसम विभाग का साफ कहना है कि आने वाले दिनों में कुछ राहत मिलने की उम्मीद है और इस स्मॉग से निपटने के लिए हमें कम्युनिटी के तौर पर हमें समाज के तौर पर कदम उठाने होंगे कैमरामैन मनीष भल्ला के साथ नवविक्रम सिंह राज्यसभा टीवी दिल्ली न्यूज फ्रॉम जम्मू एंड कश्मीर नाउ सेंटर्स अ स्पेशल रिप्रेजेंटेटिव टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर दिनेश्वर शर्मा मेट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ सेवल कश्मीरी पंडित ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन जम्मू ऑन फ्राइडे The Kashmiri Pandit groups are sought an institutional mechanism for the welfare of the displaced community. On the last day of his five-day visit to the state, Sharma also held meetings with the members of chambers of commerce and other trade bodies in the state. Now, reaching out to all the stakeholders in the state, he also met with the various other groups and civil society delegations. Dineshwar Sharma arrived in Jammu for a two-day visit after spending three days in Srinagar. where he met uh, various uh, civil society groups and the delegations of political parties aaj jo interlocutor jo dineshwar sharma ji hain unse mulakat hamari hui hai aur panthers party ki taraf se humne unko memorandum diya hai bpos aur madhur industries kuch jammu mein lagaye jaye kyunki kashmir ke log bhi agar hum dekhe to jammu mein bada comfortable feel karte hain hame lagta hai ki consistent policy लॉन्ग टर्म जम्मू रियासत जम्मू कश्मीर पे जो मिसिंग थी वो उस उस तरफ एक प्रक्रिया शुरू हो चुकी है ऑन टू आर अदर टॉप स्टोरी द पाकिस्तानी गवर्नमेंट हैज सेड दैट इट विल अलाउ कन्विक्टेड इंडियन डेथ रो प्रिजनर कुलभूषण जाधव टू मीट हिज वाइफ नो दिस कम्स मंथ्स आफ्टर इंडिया हैड रिक्वेस्टेड इस्लामाबाद टू ग्रांट अ वीजा टू जाधव्स मदर ऑन ह्यूमैनिटेरियन ग्राउंड्स Now, according to reports, uh, the Pakistani Foreign Office has sent a note to Abel in this regard to the Indian High Commission in Islamabad. Former Indian naval officer Jadhav has been sentenced to death by a Pakistani military court in April on charges of espionage and terrorism. However, the Hague Bay National Court of Justice uh, had halted his execution on India's appeal. And now, let's get you all erection-related news. in verdict 2017 well uh, congress vice president rahul gandhi will be on a three day campaign tour of north gujarat from today in his uh, three day road trip rahul gandhi will cover six districts of north gujarat he will hold meetings with the women villagers as well as the different communities uh, during the tour He will also visit the famous uh, Ambaji Temple in Banaskantha district. The Congress is uh, also likely to release its uh, first list of candidates uh, for the Gujarat Assembly polls next week. Remember, Gujarat goes to polls next month in a two-phase election. And U.S. President Donald Trump sent out a strong message on trade at a meeting of Asia-Pacific countries in Vietnam on Friday, insisting on fair and equal trade policies. He also had a word of praise for Prime Minister Narendra Modi and India's performance as a fast-growing economy. Here's a report. The Indian economy and Prime Minister Modi got an unexpected thumbs up from US President Donald Trump during his address at the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Vietnam. Trump commended India for being the world's largest democracy and for achieving astounding growth under Prime Minister Modi. Since India opened its economy, it has achieved astounding growth and a new world of opportunity for its expanding middle class and prime minister modi has been working to bring that vast country and all of its people together as one and he is working at it very very successfully indeed stressing on his america first policy trump said that the united states would no longer tolerate chronic trade abuses and would insist on fair and equal trade policies the united states will no longer turn a blind eye to violations cheating or economic aggression those days are over we will no longer tolerate the audacious theft of intellectual property we will confront the destructive practices 
of forcing businesses to surrender their technology to the state and forcing them into joint ventures in exchange for market access. Since taking office, President Trump has pulled the U.S. out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a major trade deal with 12 APEC member countries, arguing it would hurt U.S. economic interests. In stark contrast, China's Xi Jinping said that globalization was irreversible and voiced support for multilateralism. He also claimed that the One Belt, One Road project will provide the Asia-Pacific region with a broader and more vigorous cooperation platform. After attending the APEC summit, Trump paid a state visit to the Vietnamese capital Hanoi. He is now in the Philippines and will end his 12-day Asian tour on the 13th of November. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on to some other news now. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will leave tomorrow for a three-day visit to the Philippines. Now, Prime Minister Modi will attend the 15th ASEAN India Summit and the 12th East Asia Summit to be held in Manila on Tuesday. Now, the summits will be attended by heads of state of 10 ASEAN and 18 East Asia Summit participating countries respectively. During the visit, Prime Minister will have a bilateral meeting with the Philippines President Rodrigo Duarte. And on the margins, uh, Prime Minister Modi will also hold bilateral meetings with uh, several other world leaders. At the 15th ASEAN India Summit, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and ASEAN leaders will review the commemorative activities undertaken in 2017 to mark the 25 years of India's dialogue partnership with ASEAN, as well as uh, review the broad spectrum of ASEAN-India cooperation in all its aspects. And on to sports now, Sri Lankan cricket team will begin its India tour with a warm-up match. Now, chasing a dream of winning their first cricket test in India, Sri Lanka will begin their tiring tour against a depleted board president's 11 in Kolkata. The Lankans will play three tests and uh, as many ODI and T20s in the long series. The matches are scheduled to begin uh, from 16th of November. Now, this will be the first test of the island nation in India since 2009-2010. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday met the Indian under-17 football team. Now, the team has represented the nation in the FIFA World Cup 2017. The team was invited by the Prime Minister's office after they came back from Saudi Arabia following the AF. Uh, See under 19 championship qualifiers. India's run at the FIFA under 17 World Cup came to an end after slumping to a 0 4 defeat at the hands of Ghana in their last Group A fixture. The India under 17 team are now slated to play their trade in the upcoming I League 2017 18. In a series of tweets, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that he had an excellent interaction with the Indian team. The Prime Minister further added that he is very happy to see the popularity of football among the youth of the country. And a superstar lineup, including Lionel Messi and Zinedine Zidane, unveiled the Telstar ball, the official ball to be used at the 2018 World Cup. The Telstar has an embedded near field communication chip, which enables interaction with it using a smartphone. Now, this will be the first time in football history that this technology will be embedded in a ball for the World Cup. We leave you with the visuals of this iconic ball. Thanks for tuning in to Breakfast News on Rajasthan Television.